Now you were on the talk for, for a second. So I pull up the email. I know the least thing you like doing. It's talk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like to, to give our honor. All praise and thanks to the Most High, Yah. <clears throat> Thanking Him for life, health, and strength. Thanking the Most High for this holy Shabbat day. Um, I wasn't too prepared to do this, to be honest. I, actually, I was a year ago. The brothers looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> I said, "Yeah, let's let's talk about breasts. This is this is the time. This is the month where it, we're here to raise awareness." And the Most High God put it. In me, he put it in us to kind of, to be aware. He's, he's offered me the opportunity to go to school, to get the education. That's what we said. Let's go, go out there, get what you got to get, and bring it back home. That's what we've been saying, right? So here I am today, and I give honor and glory to the Most High God because it wasn't only me. I had the opportunity to have uh, great parents. <laughs> For them to give me the support to make it through college, you know, while I'm out here doing the best that I can, giving me the guidance that was much needed. Also, the community here also played a huge part in my development. So I, I can't turn my back on the Most High first and foremost, and I can't turn my back on His people. So with the knowledge that the Most High Yah afforded me, it's only right that I pass it forward. Um, <laughs> so this whole journey started out with me coming from Grenada. I'll tell you this much. I didn't plan on getting into healthcare at all. My goal was to come out here to be an electrical engineer. Somebody said, well, how did you end up <laughs> taking care of people? It was, it, was, it was very much a challenge to be a student and also try to maintain in the real world coming out here to the Americas. Because as a young adult, not only you gotta take care of yourself, but you also gotta go to school full time. If anybody know anything about going to work full time and going to school full time, you definitely need a couple, some extra strength from the most high yeah. It was tough. It wasn't an easy journey, but I latched on to the survival more so focusing on school. And then somebody sat me down and said, brother, you know, <laughs> you got to get yourself together because you're getting older. You're gonna, you wanna, of course, you'll want to have a family someday. So guess what? You're going to have to start thinking about a program where you can get into, where you could get in and out literally, where you can maintain, make money to, to support a family. And I'm looking at all the career choices, and I'm like, this is what I've been doing. But he's like, man, you're, you're struggling in, 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 your, in your electrical sciences. You're terrible at physics. You need to figure out something that's working for you. I appreciate people that's very upfront and straight up. You know, they love you, but they tell you the hardest things and make you go home and reconsider. So I decided to give a shot to the general sciences and the biologies and the microbiologies. And I was passing, listen, so it was so easy to me. It felt so natural. And I give thanks unto, unto the Creator because I ask for guidance. And this guidance can only come from the Eternal. So I went ahead, I took all my sciences, then I went out to school, <clears throat> to Alfred State. Everybody's like, wait, where's Alfred State? I'm like, it's like eight hours from here, but it's in New York State, don't worry, I'll be good. The school, when I first got there, it was very intimidating. I walked into an auditorium with about 160 students. I was the only black guy that walked in, I was late with a carry-on. And I'm like, I walked in, everybody, all the eyes on me. So I walked in and I was like, yeah, my name is Rashawn. This, this is my first day and I'm here to make this happen. So from 160 students in the class, it ended up being a graduating class of only 40 students. Mind you, it's, it's a SUNY, so nobody's really paying for this education. It's like, if you're in there and you want to do well, you got to really show yourself approved. And I, I, again, I thank, I thank my mother for those hard lessons because she's like, remember my first exam, I didn't flunk it, but she's like, if you want to do well, don't come to me crying about, <laughs> about no bad grades because you're going to have to push through this program. So I said failure was not an option. So again, I thank the most high God for my, for my family, 
family close, family abroad, and I'm, I'm grateful. So the, yeah, I'm gonna need a lot. Of I have no notes. I need a lot of particip participation. I see a lot of sisters in here, so I need your feedback. You know. Yeah. When it comes to healthcare, and we think about. Western medicine, we think about getting an education from America. Oftentimes, we, we may want to downplay it, or we may feel like this country really has nothing positive to give to us. I, I think we should just take a, a second look and, at education and see how it can benefit us as a people because we're often depicted as a people that's wild, that lacks structure, that lacks wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But all throughout the Torah, we see that the Most High God, he is trained, and he has put in strategy and structure and knowledge that was beyond our So. We should take these things that's afforded to us here and make it, make it be a part of us. Let it allow us to grow. Let us ex look beyond our boundaries and try not to stay too closed in. We look at our forefathers, Moshe. We look at Yosef. They had great dealings with Egypt. This is outside of Israel considering the language that they learned, considering the sciences that they have adopted. This is something that they have taken from outside culture, and it benefited them, and even the Most High Yah showed it that, that it's something that could even let you prosper. Even Yosef being someone great in Egypt, this is the blessing of the Most High God when we serve him first and foremost and take the things that's out there and incorporate it into what we have going on. See, we were around other living and structured societies that had governance, that had rules, regulations. They had teachings, they had education. So for us to pick up from them is really not far-fetched. So here we are in America, 2023. There's so many different professions out there, so many different trades. Young men get your Get yourself ready, figure out what you want to do. Yeah. Don't waste no time. As you can see, this world is getting tougher by the day, tougher by the minute, by the second. Yes, and sir. one thing somebody told me, which didn't really work, is like, man, you, you got time. No. That's no. the worst thing somebody could have told me, because you know what I did? I took two semesters off here, two semesters <laughs> off there, and I chilled, because guess what? I got time. <laughs> 10 years done passed. I don't have babies. <laughs> Got some bills that's like, man, I have time. No, you don't have time. You focus on the creator. Focus on being an outstanding person before the creator. And of course, you'll be able to offer more to your family, first of all, and you'll be a better asset to your community. All right. That's good. <laughs> so yeah, breast cancer. Um, so again, it's really to raise awareness so that we can have an understanding of, first of all, what it is, how someone can get it. We can go through some of the risk factors. And, and bear in mind, it is a Shabbat day. And some may wonder, well, how can you incorporate something like this into the holy day, the Shabbat day? Well, throughout the scriptures, we see where the Most High God said where he gives us certain things for food. Not also for food, but he'll tell you also for, for healing. He'll tell you, <clears throat> he'll give you certain instances where he, commit, where he, do, where he does miracles. We went through some portions a couple months back where it talks about certain things that's used during certain rituals, and it doesn't take too much to just, just look up what those, um, say, hyssop, for example, 
hey, I entitled two more properties, whatever thing that something like that would be used in rituals, in other words, to get cleaner or to be ritualistically clean to be acceptable for the Almighty. So with us talking about breast awareness, we are, <clears throat> again, doing something new, evoke, evoking change in a, in a good way. That way we can be educated and we can look for certain things and it can save lives. For us to have these, this information this, now in, in these times, for me, it's, it's the most high God giving his people some sort of mercy because he told us when we, because of our wrong, he's going to let us be played with certain things. But if, he's, if now he's giving us the information that we can reverse these things, this is a blessing. All right. Next slide. So, breast cancer in itself, the pathophysiology of breast cancer, we can talk about it all day. But one thing I want to make plain is the information. Because in the Torah, it talks about someone's supposed to be able to receive this word, and someone even of simple understanding should receive it, hear it, and understand it. Somebody could walk up from the street and walk in here and be like, oh, I understand what this brother's teaching about. Yes, we could, I could go, go deep, but, the, but, but for what purpose? Because I'll, I'll easily, easily lose my audience, you know? It'll probably make me look good, but at the end of the day, have you learned anything? I just wasted your time and mine. So what is breast cancer? So I said, is it a disease? in which the cells in the breast grow out of control. So we, we know that it starts off as a tumor. So there's different types of tumors. There's tumors that's benign, and there's tumors that's cancerous. So a benign tumor, again, is think of a 600-pound security guard walking or a bouncer walking through a club trying to get to somebody. He's going to push everybody out of his way and he's gonna get where he needs to go. Something that's cancerous, it literally consumes everything in its path and it, it takes hold of every cell and turns it into a tumor which is now toxic. And being that it is toxic and is in the system, usually it may have a local effect and over time it causes a systemic effect because guess what, blood circulates throughout the body. So again, it's a tumor that can start in the breast and then it can go throughout. This next slide. Next one. Yeah. So <clears throat> some of the risk factors for breast cancer, um, it says here increasing age, most, co most common in women over 50. It does say mostly women, because men can also get breast cancer. You know, I had a patient that one time he, he told me, well, this is what I'm here, this is what, I, this is what I survived. And I was waiting for him to tell me you were joking. And he's like, no, this is, this is real. Men do get breast cancer, but it's more common in women due to the fact that their bodies are more complex in nature. Remember, we went through that portion, uh, Tazria, and it talks about with the woman during that time of her separation, in the time of the, her separation when she's in her sickness, it's a lot going on hormonally with the woman. Even after the time she gives birth, she needs, she's in that time of separation because her body needs to get back to homeostasis. You know, not only in, in a physical sense, but in a spiritual and emotional state, she has to kind of find herself back. And the Most High God understands this because he's, he's, tell, he's given her her time to separate herself. So without straying too far from the topic, some other, re some other reasons, a starting menstrual cycle before 12, usually that's about the age of a normal menstrual cycle, start like 13, 14 in girls. So the earlier ones, it can put them at risk. Previous breast cancer diagnosis, I think that one is the most obvious. F family history of breast or ovarian cancer, physical inactivity, Someone said something very important back then, back in the, in the lunchroom. They was like, when we were younger, 
cancer wasn't a thing that we were, we didn't know anything about cancer. My great-grandmother never had it. My great-great-grandmother never had it. Not until I came here and I started living 20 years. We started 20 years in the country. We're talking about, oh, we're getting diabetes. We're getting this, that, and the third. It's simply because of in inactivity. The work that we used to do back then, it causes a lot of strenuous activity, a lot of lifting, a lot of pulling. I mean, farming in itself, if you know anything about that, you sweat bullets. Over time, you have tractors and trailers, but you're still going to be physical to the point where you're sweating. So there's something important about activity, something important about exercise. I think the recommended time is about 30 minutes a day for about five days a week, if I'm not mistaken, or three days. So four days, it always changed. American Heart Association. I, we could talk about the American Heart Association Association all day because we understand that they put out information and I can't really, we on live, I'm sure we are. But I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna get this whole thing shut down. But let us do our research, let us be intelligent and do the right things that will cause us to have longevity of life. Because most High God, he tells us, he said, choose life. Choose life, choose life and live. When you choose life, what are we, what are we doing? We choose the Most High We choose his ways. We live in his laws and his statutes. But there's other things that come into it. Not so much secular things, but this is your life to be active. All right? Taking oral contraceptive pills. Now, I know we have several different viewpoints on this, and I, and I don't want to ruffle any feathers, but let's just get to the facts. Um, Taking these pills or birth control, it can cause a lot of things. Weight gain, um, stroke, it can, it can lead to that, that kind of situations. And also increase chances of getting breast cancer and also cervical cancer. So I say this to say that we can't model ourselves after the Western society when it comes to their sexual acts. We usually have to, we have to set our own standards and kind of figure out what's best for us. Because again, we're taking this knowledge from Western medicine or Western society, but again, how are we gonna take this to make it holistic for us? And how can we can do the things that are still maintaining righteousness onto the creator, which is most important. So lifestyle, again, diet and lack of exercise. Uh, smoking, of course, that we spoke about, and gender, of course, is more, more chances of a woman getting this than a man. All right, let's go to the next slide. Oh, please, question, <laughs> questions? I'm well, I, I, would, I would take any questions. There's patches, there's shots, absolutely. There are some choices that are safer than others. However, it gets the same effect systemically. So you are putting yourself at risk because there's, there's a long list of them. Like, like we said, the pills, the shots, like the Depo-Vera, there's so many different um, things that's out there. But don't get me wrong, sometimes women are put on these things for, for example, systematic uh, menses to try to get you on control so you don't have the hot flashes as, as bad, you know. So there's certain things that they will give you to offset some of those symptoms. But again, my point is mainly to deal with the sexual pr promiscuity of it because you know what, sometimes women get that false feeling or a false sense of protection when they say, okay, I'm now on contraceptives. But guess what? This, this man that you want to have sex with, he's HIV positive. Is that going to help you? This guy has gonorrhea. The chance of you catching it, yeah. Maybe 100%. 100% chance you're going to get it, even if you're only on contraceptives. So, again, it's, it's not... That's why I'm not totally against Western medicine, because we have to understand its purpose and how we can use it 
in our lives. I'm not going to be up here telling people what to do. That, that, that can be problematic. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to read off of this one. It says, <clears throat> one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer before the age of 85. So breast cancer in women, in the most, com in most common cancer in the United States except for skin cancer. The chance that women will die before breast, die from breast cancer is one in 39. Black women have the highest death rate for breast cancer. Would any, can anybody give an idea as to why that might be for our race or for our people in general? A lot of us are scared to go to the hospital and doctors. Can't, Some of us do not have health insurance. You guys, you're helping me out. I have no notes, and y'all are making this too easy. <laughs> what do you say, Ima? We're never taught how to research, or rather, shall I say, test ourselves. That's right. So she said sometimes we don't take the time to assess our own selves. So. These are all correct answers. Um, I think earlier I, I talked about in the Torah where it says most high guys going to plague us with certain things. It also talks about us getting hit the hardest. Why do we got to get hit the hardest? Because we fell off. We fell off from doing the most high's law. So all these answers are correct. Our, our, our struggle is a little different from everybody else's. Being that our disparities coming from certain parts of New York or certain parts of the world, so to speak, you're kind of cut short from some of the major resources that can help to heal people. You know, being in poverty, not having the access to the right insurance. If you don't have the right insurance, guess what? You can't afford the treatment. But now we could turn boys into little girls, and that's done for free with insurance. Is it? <laughs> This, this is what it is, but for us to have an understanding of it, it would kind of give us an idea of how to get around certain things and how to seek these treatments. Okay, maybe I can't afford Western medicine, but maybe there's something out there that could possibly help. So <clears throat> the information is out there. Um, lacking of research, absolutely. We don't take the time to just, on a phone, we rather look at something else on social media as opposed to just taking the time to look at, look at what's out there, understanding what breast cancer is, what can I do to prevent it. That's why it's so, it's so mainstream because it has plagued us so much that it can't be ignored. Again, the Most High showing his mercy because he's given us, he's equipping us with these things for us to have less numbers of people that are dying from cancer. Sometimes we're just scared of going to the doctor. I heard that word trust. Trust is a big word. Not too long ago, we were the same people that went through the Tuskegee experiment. We weren't the experimenters, we were the guinea pigs. So when somebody tells me, hey, I don't trust nobody in a lab coat, I understand, you. I understand where you're coming from. Oh, I don't trust taking a pill, not even for a headache, I understand where you're coming from. Because I understand our history. I understand us being the main sources of their research. Yeah. So it's not a death sentence, especially if it's found at an earlier stage when you're doing those things um, Ima mentioned to assess yourself. We're going to talk a little bit about a more a little bit more about that. It says currently there are more than 3.8 million breast cancer survivors in the United States. So there are people who are fighting. There are people who are continually in the battle, some in remission. Sometimes it goes away completely. And we give honor and glory to the Most High God because we know for sure that there's no healing that's going to be done without him. You know, we're grateful for the Creator for, for he hears our prayers. Even 
in these places and these times. So surviving breast cancer is possible. I just, I just found this uh, proverb to be fitting as a primary prevention. <coughs> it says, trust in your whole with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I'm trying to figure out where I was coming from when I wrote this, but it's not too far fetched. We're the kind of people that's gonna Go to a mechanic and say, I got a stomach problem. What should I do? <laughs> You're probably going to say you need an oil change. Or <laughs> you need a wash out. If you ask my wife, she might say, go drink some tea. Because <laughs> she got that West Indian background. Pray to God. That's where we start. We, you pray to God, and then you go seek the physician. So his end, there's something you have to do. After praying, right. nobody saying praying is wrong. That's the last thing anybody would probably say in these doors. But you have to follow up with some type of intervention. Right. And going to a doctor, somebody that's trained in their field, hello, that's who I would want counsel from. Not the plumber down the block. Right. Not the mechanic. Jump in. Okay, I have a question. And regarding to prevention, mm -hmm. Also, very mindful, yeah. Genetics and stuff like that. But I heard that there, I don't know how true this is, there are certain grades, godly things that go from the earth that you can consume to lessen your chances of getting cancer or cancer. Is that Absolutely. So, in, in the same presentation there, I'm not only focusing on Western medicine, but I'm also going to give a touch on some of the herbal things that are used um, for prevention, even during the tertiary phase when they're actually in that phase of having cancer, the things that they can use at home, the certain herbs you can possibly buy, and the things that you can use, again, to, to eliminate it because it has been proven, actually, a lot of chemo is actually coming from herbs. And the, I have the research here to show it, it's not just coming off of my own head, but I'm going to make sure we're going to touch on some of those herbs that you're probably aware of. You know, even the certain things that we use in our everyday um, cookings, like the turmeric and all these other things, it's, those healing properties could be found in that. But we're going we're gonna to definitely get into that a little bit more. Yeah. So done. <laughs> Praise God. So, <laughs> primary prevention. How to reduce your risk of breast cancer? So we're going to talk about the natural ways, but obviously we spoke about breast. We, we spoke about uh, control of weight. We spoke about hormone therapy, breastfeeding. I think that's huge. In our, in our, because I mean, here we go talking about our position again as black people. You got to work 48 hours just to make sure that you're maintaining to have a roof over your head. You don't have the luxury time to sit down and breastfeed your child. So you might pump, you might get a little something in the bottle, and then they get in formula. And they're going toward the formula, and we're noticing that women who breastfeed have less chances of that. Again, this is all hormonal. hormonal. I'm not going to get into the, to the science behind it. But it would help decrease the chances of that hormone, that, that excess hormone that can cause unwanted growth in breast tissue. Yeah. All right, this is the slide I, I think the brother's seen, and they was like, nah, he's definitely not doing this. So <laughs> I said, let's, let's, just, let's just look at the details before you knock it. So this has been sitting down for a year. I think Ooz touched on that. It's been sitting there for a year, but I'm okay because this is not, it's not the norm. You know? For me, it's normal, and they totally get that because I see this on a daily basis. You know, I'm working with people here. You know, I, I got into family, a family practitioner. So that means I work with doing women's health, the elders, the young ones, babies. This is just where I end up just falling in. So I have to learn how to do this. 
I got to do pap smears and all this type of stuff. And this, is, and this to me is normal. So when I come up here and I do certain presentations, like, yo, this guy, man, something's <laughs> some got to be wrong with this brother. Like, no, nah, this is just, it's, it's normal. And I hope that we can kind of, this is good desensitization, trying to understand what the body is about and how can we point certain things that can possibly save our lives. So <clears throat> early signs of breast cancer and, and breast self-examination. So let's just look at the diagram to the right. These are the different motions that you're going to do to figure out if you feel any abnormal growth or lumps tumors in the breast. There's a straight motion, there's a circular motion, and it's straight to the center, meaning straight to the nipple. So if you see any changes in the nipple, the nipple is growing inwards as opposed to just staying outwards. There's discharge, there's changes in the skin, um, changes in the shape. These are all warning signs that, hey, something has to be done. Remember what we said? There's nothing wrong with praying. You know? You see? I, we're going to try to keep it rated G. <laughs> no, I get it. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. So, <laughs> right. Right. And that's why this information is vital. Um, sharing this again amongst your peers, amongst your sisters. For the brothers who have daughters, you might want to teach them as well because you, you may be saving their lives. So what was mentioned is also that our brothers also play a role in educating our sisters, even your own wives. If some people may be lapsed, you might be the one to figure out, hey, maybe something is wrong with my wife. She may need, she may need to get checked out. So it's an it's an opportunity for everybody to get on board. And again, this is just one topic out of so many, just because it's the month of raising awareness. You know, understanding your body is critical. I think I said that in, in one lesson, brothers and sisters, because guess what? When you see something that's abnormal, you're able to, to pinpoint it. You're able to search out the creator and ask him for, for guidance, for healing. And again, going to see the right person who's able to direct you in the right place so you can get some type of attention, medical attention. Uh, somebody asks, <coughs> how does breastfeeding reduce breast cancer? That's from no shop yet. So I did mention that I don't want to get into the, path, into the pathophysiology of it, mining that is the Shabbat day. It's not really a science lesson. But with... With women breastfeeding their children, <coughs> it's, it increases hormones. Actually, it decreases a certain amount of hormone. So being that you decrease a certain amount of hormone in the spine of the child's growth, you're now allowing the body to come to homeostasis faster. That's a very short explanation as to why. But... Again, the woman's body is very hormonal <clears throat> with considering the pituitary gland, considering your thyroid, considering your breasts, your cervix, the wall of your uterus. It all has very high hormonal cells. And every part of it plays an important part. Giving birth plays a super important part in hormonal balance. That's the best answer I'm going to give. Yeah, we can go next one. Secondary prevention. So, biennial screening mammography for women ages 50 to 74. So, mammograms. The, the machine don't bite. Yeah. <laughs> All right, 
I couldn't give that answer because I'm not a woman. I, I'm hearing that it hurts. It is. So how, how long does it take for a mammogram? 15 minutes. And you're, you're not sitting, you're standing, correct? You're standing. So you're standing, they're placing the breast in between the machine and they, <laughs> did you have to say it like that? So they, <laughs> so the breast, yes, it is closed together so that they can take a look and see what's going on on the cellular level. The radiation exposure is very minimum, but at the same time, the benefits outweigh the risk. You know, sometimes we have to look at these things as well in medicine. With? Okay. Absolutely, because they need to get in that tissue. I understand. So, so the, what someone was saying that they would make certain accommodations. So even if you're on the bigger side and you're worried about getting it done, yes, there there are sonograms. It makes sense so that they can take a better look and see what's going on within the breast tissue. Next point, it says women with a family history should be screened earlier in their 40s. So in our community, we don't like to talk about certain things, right? If somebody was, had prostate cancer, for example, they usually kind of like sweep it under the rug. If someone must have like a mental health issue, we kind of sweep it under the rug and families don't really get to talk about certain things. If someone has sickle cell disease, you know, if they're getting with somebody, they don't talk about their, their health issues before cohabitating. But we need to normalize speaking about our health history and let, us, let people know what's going on, um, especially your doctors. They're the last people you want to lie to. Let them know what's going on with you, because nine times out of, a, out of ten, they can pinpoint you in a certain, certain direction to get you tested ahead of time. Again, the kind of prevention that you would need. So DNA testing, the BRCA1, BRCA2 genes, yes, they can do blood tests to figure out, hey, can I get breast cancer? So there are certain things well-learned doctors that's not too stingy about running tests and labs and making sure your insurance... You see, here goes insurance come into play again. If your insurance don't cover it, you think they're going to be like, hey, you should get this test and that test. And no. Notice if you have good insurance, they talk to you a little different. They send you here. They send you to this referral, give you a referral for your endocrinologist. They, take you, say, they send you everywhere and make sure that you're good because they know that they're going to get a cut and their buddy's going to get a cut. So... You can ask about it, even though it's going to cost you out of your own pocket. You'd be like, yeah, I just want to be sure that I'm clear for breast cancer. Let's go ahead. Oops. Yeah. So tertiary prevention, that's literally the things that you're going to, the steps that you take when you're noticing symptoms, when you realize, hey, something is going on with me, <clears throat> and this is the things that I have to do. So, again, we're going to have to go through some of these precepts because I think if it's fitting, we need to mention it to show that it's not so far fetched from our, from our reality. And the most high God, he fashions our body so he knows what's best for us. <laughs> Psalms 103, verse 3, it says, Bless Jehovah, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all in iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love. When you're going through that phase of sickness and illness, Jehovah is the one that can take you from the bottoms of hell. The Most High God is the one that can return sick and deadly cells and make them wholesome again. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's fashioned your body. To me, I'm fascinated by this body because it takes a high level of understanding and wisdom. I've been praying for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding before I even know what it means. And as I get older, I'm realizing, man, you would never know it all. 
So you want to rely on someone who knows it all. You want to rely on someone who's able to heal you and turn your bad situation good. This is the goodness of our Father. Genesis 1, verse 29. Oh, God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. So oftentimes we, we have people say, my food is my medicine. The food that you eat is your medicine. The things that you get from the earth, it takes up all those nutrients, all those vitamins and minerals, and it now becomes part of you. And it plays a vital role in a healthy existence. Exodus 23, 25. You shall serve Jehovah your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and will take sickness away from among you. So you can be eating and drinking and doing everything that's right, and your sickness doesn't flee. Because we have to understand where our healing comes from. You know, our healing comes from the Most High Yah. And lastly, Ezekiel 47, verse 12, And on the banks, on the sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. They will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but that will bear fruit, fresh fruit, every month, because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food, and their leaves for healing. Praise the Most High. Go ahead. The question is, why does chemo has radiation in it? So, let's, 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 let's examine the two. So, radiation is, radiation is different from chemo. So, they're both a form of treatment. Most of the time, the first form of treatment would be radiation, which, which literally does is try to eradicate every cell or disease or plague cell within the body. So it either can be burning it using certain different methods to get the cells that has been affected out of the body. Chemotherapy is the medication or the treatment that would help to prevent it from growing. So after, it's been ta after everything has been taken out, the treatment is now playing its part to make sure that it's now gone and it doesn't return. So there are two different forms. Uh, let's go to the next slide. And run out of time. Okay. I literally have like, okay. So I think we, common breast cancer treatment. So the medication in this case, this would be your, your chemo, your radiation, this will be exactly what I, what I spoke about. It says, very high energy x-rays zap and shrink cancer cells. They're either delivered to your entire breast, they're tightly focused on where the tumor is or was. So that's the radiation. So let's go over um, to medication. There's more than one way to kill a cancer cell. Bombard it with chemo, cut off its fuel supply with hormone therapy, or teach your immune system to fight it. Surgery, also another, literally going in there, doing a lumpectomy or a mastectomy. Certain things you can do to remove the tumor, or again, remove the breast so that the person has a less chance of getting breast cancer again. Or for spreading. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah. So we talked about some of the natural things that can be used, and sometimes we think of chemo, and we often, we often think that, oh, it's made in the lab. Understand that the most high God created every living thing on this planet. So with him creating the things that's on the planet, we are now educated to the things that we can use so to prevent the spread of cancer. So it says the chemotherapeutic agents used for breast cancer are derived from plants, fruits, leaves, flowers, lichens, and, and fungi. And 
in brackets, that's the, the resource that I have. At the, at the last slide, you're going to take a look if you really wanted to get into it to see what kind of fruits and stuff there are. But I'm just going to pinpoint one or two of them that we may be familiar with. Echinacea. There are some common names that are linked <clears throat> with Echinacea are purple cornflower, Kansas snake root, and black samson. This is what the flowers would look like. But again, they have very strong and very potent anti camry Absolutely, this is what you find in chemotherapy. Black cohosh. Let's go to... Who's? Black cohosh. Patients of breast cancer most commonly use black cohosh during radiotherapy and chemotherapy. It has been used by Native Americans since many centuries for the treatment of menopausal signs, premenstrual discomfort, and dysmenorrhea. I, I'm of, I often believe that even women in our history used certain things when they were getting their plants because they were also educated about herbs, not only the Native Americans. So best believe it started from somewhere before it got over to the, to the Americas. That's what I do believe. Let's read. This next one. So another one, burdock. In early times, burdock was useful in arthritis, tonsillitis, measles. But now it, is, it has been found that burdock has anti-tumor activity. It relieves, his, it relieves pain, lessens the tumor size, and enhances the survival phase. See, the plant looks much harmless. It looks very forgiving. It looks healing. But if you understand Western medicine, a lot of research has been done. Um, a lot of statistics have been done. It comes along with the research. And a lot of the treatment is very much controlled through pharmaceutical companies. But I think we should have an understanding of where these treatments are coming from, knowing that we give Western medicine maybe too much props because the creator is the one who's the one who gives us these things that re return us to our, our health. Yeah. Real fast, you mentioned turmeric, flaxseed. Yep, turmeric, garlic, ginger, green tea. Green tea is very good for you, but not to be using too much of an abundance. And you have ginseng and your normal day vit vitamin C and vitamin D sources. Um, Zinc, as that's also, I should add that to the list too, because they also find out that zinc also works very well with vitamin C and others to improve the wellness of your immune system. Um, I think just that last slide is some of the resources that you can take a look at. This went well considering the time and also lack of preparation. I thank the, the creator for heaven and earth, and I hope some of your answers, questions have been answered. Absolutely. So, someone mentioned, Imam B is mentioning this, the sugar in our diets to limit it. Absolutely. When you consider in healing, I think Dr. Sebi says it best. You know, you want to maintain an alkalinic blood pH level because it's more conducive with healing, and that's very factual. All praise to the Most High. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.